Long ago, the continent was draped in darkness. Its lands overrun by otherworldly monsters, rabid beasts most foul. A scourge and a plague, sowing destruction and reaping despair. Those who wished to end the plight took up arms against the wretched creatures. All of them brave, all noble, all doomed. Yet amid the anguish, there was still hope. Alzor and Liliana, mages committed to ridding the world of all its horrors. They knew magic alone could not solve the problem. Those wielding it were too few. The infestation, too vast. And so they turned to science. Envisioning a way to use mutation to their advantage, to create exceptional beings without fear or weakness. Their bodies imbued with the very essence of the beasts they would vanquish. Yet, for this, Alzur and Liliana needed to deepen their understanding of mutagens and turn theory into practice, no matter the terrible cost. Alzur and Lily, eager to see years of research come to fruition, were finally spurred to action by a chance encounter. In a nearby village, a brute of a man had been sentenced to death, yet he did not find his fate at the end of the hangman's rope. Instead, the mages purchased his life, for he was the perfect vessel for their experiment. Sure of their science, they promptly began sedating the man and flooding his veins with myriad concoctions. As expected, the subject mutated, but most violently so. His body, twisted by the tinctures, warped into a foul abomination. With newfound strength, the monstrosity broke free from its bonds. Bewildered and bitter, it lashed out in frenzied rage. Jagged claws pierced Lily, rending flesh from bone. Alzer fought the monster back, but try as he might, kill it, he could not. With violent urges sated, the failed experiment fled from the laboratory, leaving Alzor alone to wallow in the wake of his failure, which was absolute. Darkness and despair consumed the mage for days, weeks, months, until eventually sorrow paved the way to a solitary purpose. Alzor would ensure above all else that his beloved Lily had not died in vain. During an excursion north, Alzor, cursed by an insatiable curiosity, found himself pursuing the mystery behind a series of suspicious deaths. Thanks to the mage's incredible knack for deductive reasoning, he was able to identify the culprit, a courtesan, with a grudge against men and a penchant for poison. The disillusioned woman had most wickedly murdered dozens of clients using a concoction of rare herbs, her chosen toxins leaving each victim writhing in mortal agony as their insides slowly melted away. Ever the opportunist, Alzur offered the woman a choice. She could face the wrath of the townsfolk she'd wronged, a death sentence for sure, or she could come with the mage, take her chances with his experiment, and perhaps live to see another day. She chose the latter. Of course, the mage hoped she would survive the procedure, but if her life was to be forfeited, he surmised, then perhaps she could find redemption in her sacrifice. After all, she had caused much suffering with her poisons. It seemed only fitting that she should endure Alzor's concoctions in an effort to help save countless lives. Yet this particular experiment yielded results that confounded the mage. The mutations meant to reshape the body did not progress, the entire process resembling a subtle poisoning. She did not squirm. She did not struggle. She did not suffer in any tangible way. The courtesan simply closed her eyes, and then she died. This fruitless attempt with the courtesan 
ingrained in the mage a prejudice that he would never shake. And from that day onward, of the many subjects exposed to his experiments, only a handful would be female. An acquaintance from years past heard tales of Alzor's experiments and decided to track the mage down. Once a gallant knight, bursting with vigor and in the prime of his youth, he had, like the few humans lucky enough to live so long, become old and frail. Desperately wanting to recapture his long-lost strength, he proffered his body for experimentation. A quick death in pursuit of his wish was better than a slow, pathetic crawl towards the grave, he declared. But Alzor would not have it. He knew full well that the knight's weak frame would not survive the procedure and did not want to expose a friend to unnecessary suffering. As it was, because of the man's advanced age, the experiment was unlikely to yield beneficial results. Yet the man was insistent, and during their squabble, a thought struck Alzor, something he had somehow not yet contemplated. Instead of injecting his concoctions, why not have the subject ingest a milder blend beforehand to better prime the body for future, more invasive mutations? And so the mage brewed a diluted mixture of the required herbs into a tea and gave it to the man, curious of the effect it would have. For days, the old knight's health declined as he drifted between lucidity and delirium. But then he recovered. Euphoric with delight, the old man claimed to feel more vigorous than he'd done in decades. But the feeling was not enough to sate his desires. Once he had tasted the intoxicating nectar of vitality, he lusted for more, demanding that Alzor submit him to the entire procedure, no matter the risk. After much debate, Alzor finally agreed. Unfortunately, the experiment ended precisely as he had predicted. plague, known as the Wheezing Death, had swept through a small hamlet in the hills. Arriving in search of new candidates for his research, Alzor discovered the devastation left in the Scourge's wake. Everyone, it seemed, had already perished, save one. A young boy, sulking amid the corpses of his kin, was somehow still alive, <coughs> albeit evidently quite sick and deteriorating fast. Without intervention, the boy's fate was surely sealed and so Alzor, unsure of what else to do, took the orphan with him. Whilst the mage's mutations could provide salvation for the ailing child, Alzor did not wish to subject the boy to a painful end if he didn't have to. For days, he scoured his mind for a better alternative, but the boy was too far gone, and no other method worked. By the time Alzor decided to proceed with the experiment, the child was at death's door. And so, with utmost delicacy, he sedated the boy and used a careful combination of diluted concoctions. Days of suffering followed, of high fever and vomiting and violent shaking. Yet to Alzor's surprise, the boy's condition finally improved. Better yet, his once frail body showed visible improvements and physical development beyond what a boy of his age should possess. It was a monumental breakthrough. Yet the triumph was short-lived. Despite his augmentations, the small boy perished days later, the exact cause of his death a mystery. Though crestfallen, the glimpse of success ignited hope within the exhausted mage. And while he did not yet want to admit it, he had in that moment discovered the secret 
to a favorable mutation. Youth. Alzor had made many sacrifices in his pursuit, and the toll now weighed heavily upon his soul. Yet failure now would erase all past gains and losses. He had spent so many years of his life scouring the lands, slaying abominable monstrosities, and gathering vital resources, all in steadfast loyalty to the promise he had once made. Alzor needed only to take the final step. For too long he had hoped there would be another way. Alas, he could ignore the obvious no longer. There would be no more half-measures. Youth, he concluded. It had to be. With his new process all but perfected, Alzor sedated the young boy he had adopted during his latest excursion, then carefully administered his concoctions. In spite of all the odds, the procedure did not mangle the boy's body, nor did it render him inert. By all means, the experiment was a resounding success. After decades dedicated to a singular purpose, after strife, struggle, and sacrifice, Alzor had finally accomplished his task. He had engineered a mold in which he could shape the perfect slayer of beasts. He had formed the catalyst that would mark the beginning of the end for the Age of Monsters. He had, through science and sorcery, given birth to a Witcher. But at what price?